Hi, Tim. How's it going? Good. How's it going for you? Oh, wonderful. Wonderful. Good. So, yeah, very excited. We're going to be furthering our discussion of glycoscience, and uh, there's so much to talk about. A couple of questions I had for you is talking about the looping in the discussion of the dietary supplements. And the reason I mm-hmm. say that is the book that we're, we're referencing, it's brilliant, but it is mainly, they make it very clear. They, the, the nutritional realm is outside their domain, is outside their scope. Right. And the funny part is our collective experiences, that's the one area that, that we have the experience in, is the nutritional realm. Yes. Yeah. It's, so that's a hard one to, to really address, but let me give it a shot. As you know, because you've been on both sides of the fence, mm-hmm. there is a drug realm that is just very, very different than the nutritional realm. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the two really don't mix. I, I've, I've come to accept over the years that Drugs which are defined as that which is intended to cure, treat, mitigate, prevent, or diagnose disease conditions mm-hmm. is really a pretty valid definition. That is their intention. Mm-hmm. And uh, the nutritional realm mm-hmm. is much more of a structure, function, support. So nutrition supports the body's mm-hmm. ability to heal itself. And drugs are specifically one drug for one disease condition, and that's how they research drugs. Nutrition doesn't fit into that paradigm, and drugs don't fit into the nutrition paradigm. They are two totally separate dynamics that exist. So you have the drug paradigm that that takes the studies, and the first thing they study is how toxic the drug is. Mm-hmm. All drugs are toxic. The benefit depends on the dose. I believe that was Paracelsus that said that. Mm-hmm. The interesting thing is that because all drugs are toxic, the drug paradigm is that you have to test the toxicity of the drug before you can determine the benefit of the dose. Mm-hmm. And when they were testing the aloe vera, what they mm-hmm. found was that they had to go through the the first phase of the drug testing process because they wanted to make aloe vera a drug. Mm-hmm. That was Carrington Labs. That was their mission was to convert oh. aloe vera into a drug. And they went through this testing process and they couldn't kill anything. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And they couldn't prove its toxicity. They They couldn't kill the mice, they couldn't kill the rats, they couldn't kill the dogs, they couldn't kill the cats, they couldn't Mm. kill anything. Well, they couldn't even kill the medical students. The definition of a drug is it's got to kill 50 or more percent of what, you know, the creatures or the people that it's being tested on. And uh, and they couldn't kill any, any one or anything with aloe vera. That is called the LD50 rating, the lethal exactly. dose sense. The and lethal dose that's, what you, that's exactly what you're talking about, is mm-hmm. that the 50% of the animals that have been tested mm-hmm. need to have been killed in order to, in order to determine the toxic level mm-hmm. that they need to back down from in order to find the benefit of the dose. The problem with the aloe is that they couldn't kill anything until they choked a rat to death, and then they could kill something. And that's literally what happened. They killed a rat, and and they uh, they finally declared victory because they killed something, and they went on to the next phase. But in reality, nutrition is non-toxic. It, right. By and large, now there are some toxic plants out there and so on and so forth, but Aloe vera in particular is non-toxic, mm-hmm. and and so you don't have an LD50 rating. Well, that's medical heresy in terms of when you're trying to discover a mm-hmm. drug that is effective for anything. The mm-hmm. second thing is that 
drugs are specifically designed to affect one disease condition, not multiple right. disease conditions. And because of the fact that nutrition deals with the structure and function of the body mm -hmm. and not, not just with the disease condition, what okay. you find is that nutrition actually has a an impact on multiple conditions because of the mm -hmm. fact that you have you have the you have the nutrients that are going in and supporting the body's ability to heal itself and it doesn't really matter what the disease condition is named it just matters nutrition gives the body the support that it needs to heal itself now when you're dealing with cell to cell communication Mm -hmm. All the whole body is made up of cells, and when mm -hmm. you restore proper cell-to-cell -cell communication, what you have is all systems beginning to function normally. And that's the whole idea of, as we talked about the last time, of taking nutritional supplements that right. support the body's ability to function properly. So if you have glucose, galactose, xylose, Fucose, mannose, N acetylgalactosamine, N acetylglucosamine, and N acetylnuraminic acid, which has been found to be on all the cells of the body in one form or another, mm -hmm. it makes up a cellular language. Dr. McAnally had a great way of describing this. He said that the whole English alphabet and and the and the other languages too that use our ABCs have four structures. They have a large curve. You can see that in D or C, capital. And they have a small curve, which you can see in the capital B with the two small curves. And, and then they mm -hmm. have a large line and a small line. Mm -hmm. With those four structures, you can make up the entire English alphabet, which makes up all the libraries that exist Mm -hmm. in the English language. Four structures. With the sugars, you have eight structures. Sugars, glycans. You have eight structures. Can you imagine the complexity and the complexity of trying to determine the language of each cell in the body and how it functions in those eight structures that, that exist? Well, if, if, it is. Jim, the other thing is, think about it. Each person's cell, cellular structure is unique. It's unique as a fingerprint. So then when you add the sugars to the diet, okay, there's going to be unique mechanisms of action. Perfect. And it's very hard for science to, it's like it's a paradigm that doesn't fit. It's, it's just Isolating the mechanisms of action is just, as you say, it's very difficult to stick one mechanism of action mm -hmm. with one of those eight structures. Mm -hmm. It just isn't, it, it's almost impossible to think of it right. that way because they yeah. function in a, in a very unique way of being in concert with each other like taking an orchestra, okay? You have all of these in different instruments in the orchestra, and each one has its own function. But when that orchestra comes together, if you're trying to isolate one instrument in a musical score, and you have an orchestra of 100 or 150 different instruments that are playing in this concert of music, then what you have is an impossible task of isolating that one instrument that is playing a certain line or a certain score. When all those instruments play together, they make musical score that that is that is dynamic and it's totally different than taking one instrument and making music from that one instrument. It just is it's a whole different paradigm. Well, that's kind of the illustration of of taking the taking the dynamic of one drug for one disease condition versus mm -hmm. taking nutrition 
which provides the nutrients that the body needs to heal itself and trying to isolate one thing that that mm-hmm. nutrition does. Mm-hmm. So what you have is is nutrition being the orchestration, if you will. It's the orchestra that makes the body run right. versus the individual the individual instruments that that make the body uh, do what it's designed to do in terms mm-hmm. of you know it's just two totally different dynamics. So putting the drug paradigm into the nutrition paradigm does not work, and putting the nutrition paradigm into the drug paradigm does not work. Right. Uh, so we we have to accept that and take nutrition and say we're supporting the body's function. The Dietary Supplement Health and Education Act in 1994, which was overwhelmingly passed from Congress and from the Senate and was signed by the president in 1994. This was a total illustration of what I'm talking about because it literally said that nutrition is the structure and function of the human body, and we need to understand how nutrition supports the structure and function of the human body in order to in order to make it make it work. The glycoscience article was written from a drug paradigm. It mm-hmm. talks about cancer, it talks about Alzheimer's, it talks about, you know, all mm-hmm. of the major disease conditions. And it says that unless we understand the role of glycoscience, we won't understand how these how they work in conjunction with these different glycans. So you really have a couple of different paradigms here. One is you have the patient that goes, well, I have, you know, Steve Newton used to call it conquest of the bonkers. So I have conquest of the bonkers. What do you have to help conquest of the bonkers? Well, what are the symptoms of conquest of the bonkers? Well, you know, it's my bonkers is conking. You know, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, what, how, how does that work? Well, you know. I need support for my my bankas to be able to function normally. Nutritional paradigm isn't designed to cure, treat, mitigate, prevent, or diagnose right. disease conditions. Which comes right. back to the definition of a drug. It is to it is to support the structure and function of the human body. If we get that, then we can get away from the disease paradigm. I've got conflict right. with bankas. And get into the nutrition paradigm of I'm mm-hmm. wanting to support my brain, or I'm wanting to support my liver, or I'm wanting to support my kidneys, or I'm wanting to support my heart. And then you can go into okay, what nutrients actually support mm-hmm. that part of my body? And that's really where we need to go in the nutritional paradigm. It does mm-hmm. not need to be. A deal where where we're trying to mimic the drug paradigm. Uh, one of the one of the uh, faulty things in terms of nutritional uh, supplement research is that we fall into the trap of saying, "Oh my, we're having all these Alzheimer's patients that are being helped with this nutritional supplement or this mm-hmm. nutritional regimen. Let's let's isolate what what's helping them." I mean, is it is it the aloe? Is it the CBD? Is it the vitamin C? Is it the vitamin D? Is it mm-hmm. what is it that is helping these Alzheimer's patients? Mm-hmm. Where we should be asking, what is it that supports the brain, and what is it that right. crosses the blood-brain barrier to be able to support that which God has designed to function in terms of our brains to be able to to mm-hmm. have better cognitive function. In our, it's a synergistic. Exactly. They work together. They work together. Yes. So I believe that that if we if we can grab a hold of that and get out of the medical paradigm mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. in the nutritional mm-hmm. supplement realm and and actually educate people about the benefits of different nutrients mm-hmm. on the human body. Then people can make their own minds up about about the support of the brain, about the support of the liver, about the support of the individual cells in the body, about the support right. of the the heart, about the support of you know the, the antiviral support. 
you know, there, there's just a wealth of information, but we have to get beyond the weeds. And, uh, you know, people talk about not being able to see the forest for all the trees. You get too uh-huh. close to the trees and you can't see what the benefits of nutrients are. And uh, so that's that's what I believe we we need to move forward to to in the nutritional realm and back to the transformation of health, the trans- transforming like a science book. You're absolutely right, and the scientists are absolutely right. They are not there to provide education on the nutritional realm. That is not their thing. They want to do the the medical realm and more power to them. Let's get both mm-hmm. working together in concert with exactly. one another integratively to make the body exactly. better. Exactly. I'm done with it. Go ahead. Quality of life. <laughs> yes. That's so true. What you're saying is mm-hmm. so true. And, but really, where we have some experience is in the response of the human body to the glycometricinal supplements. Correct. And that's the one area of the book. And they said it, they made it very clear. We do not address, you know, there's a multiple, you know, there's a lot written about the role of nutritional supplements. That is outside our scope. So yes. they didn't dismiss it, but it's outside their scope. Okay. That's fine. So mm-hmm. let's understand what they're saying and then let's add what we know and then raise awareness so we can move the field forward. Now, I think that another thing needs to be addressed here, and that is the confusion in the nutritional realm. Uh, let's go back to the James Lind story, who discovered mm-hmm. that vitamin C or mm-hmm. scurvy. Mm-hmm. And he used the lemons and limes and oranges to mm-hmm. mixture to actually get that done. And he had the, the, the mixture of contents and all that stuff. I mean, everything was really well documented in that. In the 1930s, I believe it was 1936, somebody won the Nobel Peace Prize for discovering, uh, Georgie, I believe it was, that vitamin C and ascorbic acid are two totally different things. Mm-hmm. That the vitamin C from lemon limes, and oranges are a mixture of different nutrients working in concert with one another to support the body's function that overcame the scurvy. Whereas the vitamin C as ascorbic acid did nothing for people with scurvy. Right. And ascorbic acid is just one component component of vitamin C mm-hmm. that has been isolated and they call it vitamin C and most of your supplements and most of your things with vitamin C in them, you will see that it's vitamin C as ascorbic acid. Well, ascorbic acid is not the same as getting nutrition from these different plants. So mm-hmm. if you isolate ascorbic acid and say this is vitamin C and you don't have any results from taking the vitamin C, the question is, do you need to take more or do you need to find your vitamin C from food sources rather than from synthetic sources? Correct. So Correct. That, that is repeated in the whole nutritional paradigm. So you have one group of people that say a vitamin C doesn't work. It's just expensive urine. And you have <laughs> another faction that says vitamin C absolutely works. Mm-hmm. It's necessary for the human body to function normally. Mm-hmm. And then you have another group that says, well, I tried that vitamin C and it didn't work. And you have another group that says, well, I tried my vitamin C and it does work. Well, the fact of the matter is that it really depends on the quality of nutrition that you extract from the plants that 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 determines whether it's going to work or not. If you don't have the highest quality sources to extract the vitamin C as naturally and normally as possible, Mm -hmm. with the possible addition of extracting it and multiplying its effectiveness, Right. Um, then you don't have the 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 correct 
uh, recipe, and you need to go to some other source of vitamin C that provides that for you. It's the same with aloe vera. If you extract whole the whole leaf aloe vera plant mm-hmm. and chop it all up and put it in a supplement, it's not going to do a spot for you. But mm-hmm. if you take that inner leaf gel and you flash freeze dry it and you turn it into a powder mm-hmm. and you you concentrate it to you know the thousandth degree or whatever, and then you put it in a supplement, it's going to do a whole lot more for you than if you just take it out of the the leaf and just put the whole conglomeration into a supplement. That's mm-hmm. the difference between quality and non-quality. And the problem is you can't differentiate between the two. You mm-hmm. have to go to a company that you can trust. You have to go to a source that you can trust that is found to be trustworthy, that has some research behind their supplements, Mm-hmm. That actually gives you the ability to to benefit from the nutritional sources that you're taking, and that that really is one of the great weaknesses that we have in terms of our labeling system, because our labeling system says 100% of vitamin C, recommended daily allowance or recommended daily intake of mm-hmm. vitamin C. Mm-hmm. Well, that's nothing. It doesn't tell you what. You know, mm-hmm. find out from people who actually have had benefits from the vitamin C and and uh, then get what they got. And, well, and Tim, you know, a lot has to like. do with the bioavailability. Okay, so yes. you take a supplement, okay, and that's what people say. Well, you know, it's expensive urine. I've taken all these supplements. It means it's not getting absorbed properly. Correct. And a lot of commercially available over-the-counter supplements, practically, you know, it's big business, but they are not well absorbed. Then there are others that are miraculously, mar- remarkably absorbed. And, and mm-hmm. honest, they tend to cost a little bit more. Yeah. They, uh, because, they, you know, they're very, very highly um highly calibrated, they're manufactured with equipment that would be comparable of that of like a pharmaceutical company, highly, highly specific. And, but again, like you're saying, the consumer needs to listen. They need to see, do they have a medical team? Do they have um, uh, education? Yeah. Absolutely. Are there some clinical studies done? And I'll be honest with you, Jim, we've talked a lot about the issues with the research in this country, but there are a lot of studies run internationally. Yes. It's very valid. Yes, so it is. You know, we're here trying to raise awareness because it's such a critical, it's such a critical time. and. And we want to empower our listeners to understand, you know, there's no, we wish there was a really simple solution. There isn't. The, the solution yeah. is to empower the individual to listen and learn and then communicate with others and share their experiences and and actually, the testimonial. The one thing we can do with nutritional supplements is provide our testimonial. Mm-hmm. And can you talk about that a little bit, that that is I, allowed? I can, and it's a very interesting dynamic. Uh, the, the First Amendment of this country says that we have freedom of speech. Mm-hmm. But there was a company that I was uh, that I had the privilege of observing as they went through the legal process of defending their nutrients, and it was discovered that uh, working with one of the top lawyers in the country, it was discovered that the freedom of speech does not cover the freedom of commercial mm-hmm. speech. So. If you mm-hmm. sell a nutrient mm-hmm. and you 
Sarah's testimony. Mm -hmm. The belief is in the medical system or in the legal system that that is commercial feat. Mm -hmm. You're sharing your testimony about a mm -hmm. supplement in order to sell the supplement. Mm -hmm. And your company is sharing their testimonies or they're allowing testimonies to be shared to sell their supplements. Mm -hmm. They put post them on the web to sell their supplements. And although that's a faulty system, this is what the FDA writes a whole lot in their warning letters. You have mm -hmm. to take your testimonies off the web because they are not allowed because they are meant to sell your supplement. Mm -hmm. And if your if your testimonies deal with a drug condition in conjunction with taking your supplements, then you're misleading the public and there thereby mm -hmm. you're discouraging them from go, going to their doctors and getting medical care and, and mm -hmm. therefore you are you are endangering those patients and mm -hmm. and so you have to take those testimonies off the air, off the web. Mm -hmm. And as sad as that is, that's the environment, the legal environment currently that we live mm -hmm. in today. Mm -hmm. That I wish I could say differently, but when I was working at Man Relief Ministries in 2002 to 2005, there was there was a time in 2003 where we were told you have to take all of the testimonies of the nutrients that that these kids are taking taking right. off the web. We could not post those testimonies because of the fact that the freedom of commercial speech, as it stands now, is mm -hmm. not uh, defendable. It is not acceptable. It is not freedom of speech. It is a violation of the law because of the fact that you're actually promoting a dietary supplement in conjunction with a disease condition. Mm -hmm. So there's two different ways of navigating that. One is to talk about the structure and function of the human body and to talk about mm -hmm. nutritional deficiencies that are in the disease conditions such as mm -hmm. allegra beriberi and scurvy which have been proven to be nutritional deficiencies hundreds of years ago and uh, and saying that you know just as people had results with taking certain nutritional supplements in mm -hmm. those days we're having results with taking nutritional supplements today, not in terms of curing our disease, but in terms of supporting the structure and function of our human body. That's what it's, and the fact of the matter is I do have this disease, and the fact of the matter is I did get better, and the fact of the matter is that I still go see my doctor, and I still take my medications, and I still do things integratively with both supporting the best in terms of nutrition and the best in terms of medical care, period. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. that's the mm -hmm. way that you can actually share your testimonies. Yeah, absolutely. But but it's not a black or white thing. It really isn't. And, it is not. Uh, it really isn't. And if you are selling a, if you're promoting a a, a supplement, it's very murky territory. To you know, well, they always say making claims. You want to stay as far away from that as possible. Correct. Now, there is a way that you can do that, and you can share your testimony in terms of saying, "I was taking this class of nutrients. I was taking mm -hmm. lycanutrients, or I was taking, you know, an endocrine supporting product, or I was taking." Mm -hmm you know, a, a product that supported my antioxidants or that kind of thing mm -hmm. and not name the supplement, mm -hmm. then you're safe in terms of talking about your condition because you are not naming the supplement that you felt helped you Correct. get better. Correct. Correct. Or you can stay away from the the condition that you're suffering from and you can talk about the supplements and talk about the structure and function of the human body 
But That's don't right. mention the disease condition. So either you don't mention the disease or you don't mention the supplement name and you're okay. Right. But right. but it is it is something that desperately needs to be addressed in this That's next uh, in, in in the next few years. Excuse me. Really does. It really needs to be addressed. And I'm hoping that it does. I think we've heard enough leaders in the field that are saying, you know what, this is this is so murky and and people need to be educated about supplements. Supplements yes. can be extremely helpful. So yes. let's make it simpler for people to understand what they can and cannot say and uh, support people learning more. Right. Now, there is a a person that is running for election. Um, I won't mention his name because I don't believe that we can be political on on our no, call. No, not. On a, on a, on Correct. a not-for-profit, we absolutely cannot. Yes. But there is a guy that has, as a lawyer, defeated the FDA eight different times, and Mm -hmm. we can mention that, and he is running for a particular office in a particular state, and if you want more information about that, you can get in touch with us. But um, there is great hope that he gets into this, into the governmental bodies that can change the law, because... He has actually been very, very um, instrumental in terms of the nutritional supplement battle uh, in terms of getting the the truth be known and and the truth out there. So if you're interested in more information on that, just click contact us and please feel free to to learn more. Again, we're not here to be political, but, but that does tie into the fact that our laws do need to change, and we do know that, and we want to move things in the right direction, and this guy can really be a big, big help in that direction. Yes, exactly. All right, that's outstanding. All right, so we've covered a lot already. Yes, we have. Look, looking at, you know, I wanted to circle back just a little bit. In the okay. role of glycan nutrients, with the Human Genome Project, because yes. this book made it so clear that it will not be possible to realize full potential of the Human Genome Project unless mm-hmm. close attention is given to glycomics and how cells make and use the myriad complex glycans that decorate their surfaces. Now that alone is a profound statement because we we know how much went into that human genome project. I mean that was that was massive. Yes it was. Yes it was. Many people say, you know, scientists they go, well, did it really get us? You know, yeah we, we learned some things but have we seen it written? Have we, you know, solved all the world's medical problems because of the Human Genome Project? Absolutely not. But I think the time has come to integrate glycoscience in the mix. That's been the missing piece of the puzzle. This book makes it very clear that integrating the Genome Project with glyco glycoscience will provide a major opportunity. See, what it is, is there are mutations, okay, like with the cell, the glycan, there's mutations. So what what can we learn about those mutations and what can help get the body back on track? So I think really, I mean, it's very exciting. Very, very exciting. And again, we'll continue to educate. We know best, and that is the role of the nutritional supplements. 
but I think it is important to have a broad brushstroke on the whole picture. So when you see how vast it is, it's absolutely monumental. Yes, it is. It's incredibly monumental. And yeah. I, I do believe that, that they're absolutely right, that Again, we're talking about things working in concert with one another, but Dr. Reg talks about, and I don't understand how the genes work at all, but Dr. Reg talks about that there's an on and off switch for each gene in the body and that there are certain nutrients that he believes turn on the genes and certain nutrients mm -hmm. that turn off the genes mm -hmm. and that there are... There are times that genes need to be on, times that need, genes need to be off. And I believe one example of that, correct me if I'm wrong, is the the immune system. That the immune system, if it's overactive, probably means that genes are turned on that are supposed to be off to try to regulate the immune system. And there are genes that are off that are supposed to be on when the mm -hmm. immune system is inactive or underactive. Right. One of the interesting things about the glyconutrient research that we've done is that the immune system in particular is, is shows that there is a modulation of the immune system. So if the immune system is overactive, it'll modulate down. If it's underactive, mm -hmm. it'll modulate. This is unheard of in terms of medicine, but this is, seems to be what the nutrients do in the aloe vera plant is mm -hmm. modulate the immune system. And uh, uh, modulation is just so key in terms of promoting good health because right. you're turning off genes that turn need to be turned on off, and you're turning on genes that need to be turned on, and exactly. there's an orchestration that's going on that you don't have missing notes, <laughs> you know, in the in the orchestral floor. <laughs> you know, you come back to that or orchestration again, and that's right. everything plays together perfectly. And when when instruments need to rest they rest when the instruments need to be playing they play and so you you really have a good functioning body um i think one of the key things too is to really emphasize that these supplements are not meant to be taken until you get better and then stop taking them this mm -hmm. is something that supports the body's system so many of us are programmed with, oh my goodness, I feel better, my my whatever it is is gone. I can stop spending the money on these supplements mm -hmm. because they're so expensive and I can go ahead and, and function, you know, normally and hallelujah, my body is all well. Well, your body functions in, in a nutritional capacity. So when you're giving it fuel, ultimately it runs mm -hmm. out of fuel and it doesn't function normally anymore. Mm -hmm. um, so people need to understand that this is not a pop a pill and everything gets better thing. Exactly. It's a daily, a daily supplemental support to the body's structure and a daily supplemental support of the body's function. Mm -hmm. And I really encourage you once you decide to go the nutritional, that you stay with the nutritional route and don't go away from it if it does work or if it doesn't work. If you know that something is good for your human body, you continue with it no matter what. Yeah. Uh, so that's... that's you are right, Tim, because it's, it's so classic, you know, you take a medicine, you take an antibiotic for a week or two weeks, you know what I mean? And you get the desired result, but this is very different. This is yeah. more structure function. It's yeah. not curing, they're, they're not, the supplements are not curing, treating, or mitigating the disease. They are supporting the human body. So Correct. that's the, like you said, like fuel. You put gas in the car, if you don't have a, a full tank of gas, 
Or if you don't have good quality gas, well, the engine's not going to run so well. That's exactly right. So, And if you don't put any gas in the car after you put gas in the first tank, it's eventually going to run out. And so you put mileage on the car and you don't refill it with fuel. Uh, okay. The car is eventually going to run out of gas, and and you're going to wonder, what in the world can I do to take it to the mechanic? And you take it to the mechanic, and the mechanic says, mm-hmm. well, I'll try replacing the spark plugs. I'll try replacing the distributor. I'll try replacing the computer. I'll try replacing this and that and the other thing. And all it really needs is gas. Mm-hmm. So you need fuel for your body. You need fuel for your car. You need fuel... And it's a continual process. It is not a one thing, one time fits all deal. Exactly right. That's right. That's why this is so important, Jim. Provide this education for folks. It's it's a lot to think about, and I'm hoping the recordings that we're doing that people will elect to listen more than once, absorb because there's a lot of principles that we're talking about. And that are very important. That is my very right, important. Yes. So let it soak in. So that would be the, the, really the point that not to be not to feel overwhelmed and say, "Oh, I really don't know what they're talking about." Well, you do to a degree. You do. And let it sink in a few times, and you'll see how much these principles sink in. That's exactly right. Thank you so much, Mary. All right. Well, Jim, this has absolutely been delightful. I thank you so much. And we'll continue to do this. Absolutely. All Look right, forward then. to tomorrow. All Thanks right. so much. Have a wonderful evening. Okay. You too. Thank you. Bye-bye.